Hello, Grade 10 Physics. Our first video is going to cover these two learning outcomes. Estimate measurements to the correct level of precision and how to express in metric units and use metric prefixes. Well, let's go. Okay, so first thing we need to think about is precision versus accuracy. What does it mean? What's the difference, right? What does it mean to be precise as a scientist? And what does it mean to be accurate as a scientist? Okay, so we're going to look at four scenarios, right? So I want you to look at these four pictures, A, B, C, D, of, let's imagine that's me trying to shoot someone in the chest, right? One of these is precise and accurate. And I want you to stop and think through each of these pictures, A, B, C, D, which of these is precise and accurate. Pause the video and have a little think. Okay, hopefully you've thought about that, came to a conclusion. I'm going to go through them one by one and tell you what they are. Okay, so number one, we have A. Right? So if my target is to hit this person in the chest and therefore kill them, I have not been able to do this in A. So I have not been, I'm not, accurate. I've not been accurate, I've not achieved my goal, I have not shot in the chest. Now, if I look at the bullets and where they are, they're sort of sprayed around everywhere, right? They're quite far apart from each other, they've went a bit randomly everywhere, which means I've also, I'm also not been very precise, okay? B, again, I'm trying to shoot someone in the chest. Have I done it? No. So again, I'm not, I'm just going to put A for accurate because I can't be bothered writing accurate again. So I've not been accurate, right? But look at my, look at where my shots have gone. They've all gone about the same place and got a small area, for some reason under the left armpit, but that's where they've gone. So it's quite precise. So I've been very precise, but I'm not very accurate. All right, C. Let's look at scenario C. Well, you know what? Some of my results have actually hit in the, the area I was trying to hit. So I have actually been a little bit accurate. I've had some degree of accuracy. I've hit in the chest where I was aiming. But again, my results are all over the place. A big massive area, which means I'm not very pre, come on pen, precise. So I've not been very precise. Let's look at our final scenario. Oh, bingo! I have put all my results and the desired data on the chest, so I've been accurate, hooray. And if you look at my results, look where I've shot them, they're all close together, which means I was also precise. I cannot do handwriting. So there we go. And the winner is... D, precise and accurate. Okay, so let's look at the same situation, but we're going to imagine that we've just collected data from an experiment. You've got all these results, right? So an analogy from shooting someone in the chest, you know, you're collecting data. Instead of trying to shoot someone in the chest, you're trying to find a specific trend line, right? So you want a specific trend line. Ooh, my graph, my drawing is dreadful. It does this way, and it's a nice straight line. And if you get that, that would be accurate. That's what you want, all right? If you get that trend, that could give you, I don't know, gravity, right? That trend line would give you a result for the acceleration due to gravity. So if I look at my four sets of data that I've taken, which of these is precise and accurate and why? Right, so if I look at my graph, and think, okay, what's my trend line? If my trend line is supposed to be through here, zoom, 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 hey, which one's accurate? Is this one accurate? No. Is this one accurate? No. Is this accurate? Oh, yeah, I've got the right trend line somehow. Yet. Is this one accurate? Yes. Is this one accurate? Yes. All right, precision. Which one has been really precise? Where are my results precise? Is this precise? 
Well, not really. The results are scattered everywhere. So there is low precision. So not precise. Is this precise? Well, look. All my results are all neat and tidy and they're on the trend line. So yes, it's precise. Hooray. Is this precise? Well, even though I've by some fluke, right, by maybe taking lots of data, got a, an accurate result, a true value, my results are a bit all over the place. I'm not close to the trend line, which means there is low precision, okay, not precise. And here we go. This is party time, right? If any of you ever get results that look like this, I will kiss you, right? This will not happen. This is high precision, high accuracy. In a high school lab, uh, that's not going to happen that often, right? Our equipment isn't that precise. It's not that good. But I tell you what we can do. We can do this. See, if you take lots and lots and lots of data and average it out, you can be accurate, but you're probably not going to be very precise, okay? So this is where we want to be. Maybe here, this is what we'll probably get. If you get this or this, you've had something called a systematic error, and I'll explain more about that later. So now, on to our definitions of precision and accuracy. I mean, I've spoken a little bit about it, but you really need to know a de definition of exactly what they mean. This, you probably want to pause the video and write down somewhere, because you need to remember this, okay? You need to remember these precisions. I don't often tell you to remember stuff, but you need to remember these, right? So what is precision? So precision of a measurement is the degree to which repeat measurements under the same conditions show the same results. So if you took lots and 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 lots, and lots, and lots of data, and you always got pretty much within reason, the same results, the way you're taking data, is very, very precise, okay? And one of the ways we can be precise is to measure to a really small amount. So we're not measuring in meters, we can measure in centimeters, that's more precise. Or we can measure in millimeters, that would be more precise. Or even in nanometers. The smaller measurement you try and make, okay, with your instrument of measurement, and the more precise you are trying to be. Okay. So one of the ways we can determine the level of precision is the instrument that we use to measure and take data. Okay. Accuracy, well that's quite simple. right? Accuracy of a measurement, so we're trying to take some measurements and it's the degree of closeness of the measurements of a quantity to that of the quantity's actual true value. Yeah, that sounds like lots of big words, right? It's a very posh way of saying that. Okay, to explain this a little bit further, um, let's have an example. Say I was trying to find a value for gravity, okay? I'm trying to do an experiment to take data to find a value for gravity. The true value of gravity, as far as we're concerned, is 9.81 meters per second per second, right? I've got two results here. Which of these is more accurate? and which is more precise. Pause the video, stop, think for a second. Okay, A, results of experiment are 9.7 meters per second. Well, if my actual result is, my true value is 9.81, well, that's pretty accurate. I'd be happy with that in a classroom. That's an accurate result. However, if the result of my experiment gives me 6.7, well, that's too low. It's not accurate. However, if I've measured down to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 decimal places, not, you know, tenths of a metre per second squared, not hundreds, even smaller than that, then I've attempted to be very precise. So that shows us this is precise, but this is accurate. All right, final thing today, metric prefixes. What does that mean? Okay, we're going to use a metric system because it's good and we like it, which means everything's done in multiples of 10. It's really, really easy, right? Um, I'm going to have to know what all these funny things mean. Mega, that's my personal favourite. Kilo, hecto, uh, deci, centi, milli, even micro, like 
and nano, probably up to about giga. We need to know what these mean, how to use these, right? And actually what we're going to use is something called scientific notation. And there will be a whole lesson on this later, right? But what you need to know just now is that you don't need to memorise these, but you need to know how to use them and flip back and forward between maybe metres and kilometres, or kilometres and mega, I know, and back and forward between these and what these mean. To give you a little example, let's just say I've travelled, you know, a really long distance, I went for a big walk, and I went for a walk of, I don't know, 100 kilometres. That's a pretty big walk, right? It would take ages. So let's say I went for a 100 kilometre walk, and I want to change that from kilometres into metres. What does this K actually mean? Well, if I look up the table, Kilo stands for times 10 to the 3. So in scientific notation, that is 100 times 10 to the 3 metres. I've got rid of the K, and it means that. What does that mean, full out and, you know, and all the zeros and spread expressing it normally? Well, that would be 100, 10 to 3, that's three zeros, 1, 2, 3 metres. Okay. We're going to give you a separate lesson on how to use this and practice this and become efficient with it. But that is what we mean by metric prefixes. I would say this group here is the group that you, where you are going to live. The, here's, they are the ones that you're going to use on this course. Okay. That ends today's lesson. There will be some questions on the flip video. Good luck and I'll see you in class.